point that is cubic spline. So first we are going to see what is mean by cubic spline and then the equations related to the cubic spline. Now see in drafting terminology mainly in ship building a spline is flexible strip used to produce a smooth curve through the designated set of points. Normally in the ship building it is used to generate the smooth curve. For example, suppose we have taken a piece of paper and we move it in the air. Then you can see it automatically a curve is generated and the smooth curve is generated. If a small piece of paper uh, which is very light and we if move it in the air, then in that case it generates the waves like a structure that is curved like a structure. It generates a sm smooth curve. So, several to how this smooth curve is generated. What a method is used to generate this smooth curve in this drafting technology. Several small weights for that you can observe here in the diagram it is shown here. Several small weights are distributed among the length of strip. Here you can observe here there is a length of strip. And in length of strip small weights are distributed. On the length of to hold it in position on the drafting table as the curve is drawn. So, where and which angle the curve is required according to the weights are adjusted. According to the weights are adjusted how the curve is required. So, that method so the curve referred in drawn in this manner is known as spline curve. The curve which is drawn in this manner is known as spline curve. Say again in drafting technology in the mainly ship building spline is a flexible strip which is used to produce a small smooth curve. For that small weights are distributed along the length of strip and these weights are adjusted in such a way that the required curve is to be drawn. Smooth curve is to be drawn and the curve drawn in this way is known as spline curve. Now, this spline curve, we specify the spline curve by giving a set of coordinate positions called the control points. How this curve is drawn? These points 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These 5 points are known as the control points. Why? Because these control the uh, shape of that curve. Because these control the shape of this curve. So, that's why these points are known as control points. If we change this particular weight, if we move towards the here, then it automatically change the shape of the curve. If this weight, these two weights, okay, these two weights, we move in this direction, it automatically change the shape of the curve. Means these control the shape of the curve, entire shape of the curve. And that's why these are known as control points. It indicates the general shape of the curve. So, the control points indicate or decide the shape of the curve. These control points are then fitted with piecewise continuous parametric polynomial function. There are two ways to represent interpolation and approximation. Both definitions are very simple. What is interpolation? When polynomial sections are fitted so that the curve passes through each control point. See, listen it again. Poly, both are polynomial as we are representing the uh, curve here that is space curve related cubic spline it is polynomial. So, here when polynomial sections are fitted so that the curve passes through each control point. You can also the curve passes through all control points, four control points that we call interpolation. So, interpolation curves are commonly used to digitize drawing or to specify animation part where all the control points are considered and approximation when the polynomials are fitted to general uh, control points path without necessarily passing through all control points. Not necessary that it should pass through all control points. If it pass through some of the control points then it is allowed that is known as approximation. So, here you can observe that it passed through P1 and P3 but not sorry P not and P3 but not P1 and P2. So, that we call it as a 
approximation plane. So approximation curves are primarily used to design the tools to structure object surfaces. Means uh, table, chairs, these object surfaces. And in animation, we require the interpolation. So here in our uh, study, we are going to consider the interpolation. Means the curve which passes through all the control points that is interpolation. Plain interpolation uh, to ensure a smooth transition from one section of a piecewise polynomial curve to the next. Now see here, uh, I write, draw here first curve in this way. We call this curve as a pew, P and I draw a second curve that is Q. So this is the transition point. This is the transition point. So to smooth a transition from one section of piece of polynomial curve. So this is one section of the curve and this is second section of the curve. We can impose various continuity condition at the connection point. So here it is continuous, correct? From this section to this section. So for this continuity, uh, smooth continuity condition, different connection point, uh, sorry, continuity conditions are used at this connection point. So there are two ways, parametric continuity condition and geometric continuity condition. So these two we are going to see in detail. Okay. So parametric continuity condition, it represents with the three ways, zero order parametric continuity, which is represented with C sub superscript zero. Then first order parametric continuity and second order parametric continuity. So first we are going to see the zero order parametric continuity. So what is mean by zero order parametric continuity? So zero order parametric continuity here, it is represent as C raised to zero. Zero order parametric continuity means that two piece of curves, two piece of curves are joined or meet at the same point. Are joined or meet at the same point. So again I am going to draw here. This is the first piece of curve and this is the second piece of curve. This is the P part and this is the Q part. So the, here it joined to each other. So for P it is the starting point T is equal to 0 and for P it is the end point T is equal to 1. And for Q this connection point it is t is equal to 0 and for q it is t is equal to 1. So that should be equal means the connection point, connectivity point means the two pieces of curves are joined or meet at the same point. So the connectivity point this one here p of t is equal to 1 it is p of t is equal to 1 is equal to q of t is equal to 0. Then we call it as a zero order parametric continuity. The connection point where it meets to each other is a same point. I am going to give you the another example. For example, I suppose draw a point P or the curve part P in this way. And from here, I draw the Q section. So whether this is T is equal to zero, t is equal to 1 for p. For q it is t is equal to 0 and t is equal to 1. So whether it follows the zero order parametric continuity? Yes, it follows the zero order parametric continuity. Why? Because here also p of t is equal to 1 is equal to q of t is equal to 0. Both are same at this continuity, uh, continuity connectivity point. And that's why it follows the zero order parametric continuity. Another example I will give you. Suppose I draw P like this. Okay. And I draw Q like this. So this is T is equal to 0. And this is T is equal to 1 for P. And for Q this is T is equal to 0. And this is T is equal to 1. So here you can observe that P of T1 is not equal to q of t0 p of t1 is not equal to t of q0 and that's why here q of t0 and that's why this is not follow 
zero order parametric condition it is not a zero order parametric continuity but in these two examples in both the examples it follows the zero order parametric continuity the simple examples are here what is the first order parametric continuity and what is the second order parametric continuity the examples are here that already i have told you now the first order parametric continuity so in the first order parametric continuity which is represented as c raised to what means that the first parametric derivative first parametric derivative tangent line tangent line means this one okay so tangent line of the coordinate function for two successive curve section are equal at their joining point means zero order is same the first parametric derivative also same and that's why it is represented as p dash t p dash when we calculate the first derivative that also equal at position connectivity position where t is equal to 1 for p and t is equal to 0 for q the second order parametric continuity which is represented as c raised to 2 means that both first order and second order derivative both first order and second order derivative of the two curve section are equal at the connectivity or joining point means second order derivative also same for t is equal to 1 in p and t is equal to 0 for q and that is represented in this way so that is parametric continuity condition the joining point should be equal at zero parametric continuity at the first order derivative and also the second order derivative now the second part that is geometric continuity condition so geometric continuity condition it deals with the shape of the curve in the previous parametric it does not uh, the shape of the curve is not considered but here in geometric continuity condition it deals with the shape of the curve here we require that parametric derivative means first order second order okay parametric derivative of two sections of the curve to be proportional to be proportional to each other the word is important not necessary equal instead of equal the two sections to be proportional to each other at the common boundary proportional to each other or the common boundary not necessary equal so the first uh, zero order again it has three zero order first order and second order so zero order is same zero order geometric continuity which is represented as g raised to zero it is same well g raised to zero it is same as zero order parametric continuity that the two curve section must have the same coordinate position at the boundary point p of t1 is equal to q of t0 both are equal at this point means zero order order parametric con continuity and zero order geometric continuity are same now the first order geometric continuity so in the first order geometric continuity which is represented as g raised to 1 means that the parametric first derivative okay the first derivative are proportional at the intersection of two successive section proportional to each other at the intersection of two successive section not necessary equal that it may or may not be equal it may be equal but may or may not be equal but these are proportional to each other as they are these are proportional to each other p dash with three coordinates x y z first order derivative and that's why it is used as a dash p dash 
So P dash x y z is equal to Q dash x y z, which are multiply with the constant value k. With multiply with the constant value k. When k is equal to one, both are equal. Both are equal. But when k is other than one, k is equal to two, k is equal to three, both are not equal but proportional to each other. Both are not equal but proportional to each other. Means that again I am repeating, first order derivative are proportional at the intersection of two successive sections. It may or may not be equal. As these are proportional to each other, the constant k is considered here. If k when k is equal to one, they are equal. First derivative is also equal when k is equal to one. But when k is other than one, then the first derivative is not equal but proportional. Why? Because k is same value, and that's why it is proportional. So here we can say that the first order parametric continuity implies first order geometric continuity, but first order geometric continuity does not imply first order parametric continuity. Okay? When k is equal to one, both are same. Means first order parametric continuity implies first order geometric continuity, but when k is not one, then both are not equal. Means the first order geometric continuity does not imply first order parametric continuity. Vice versa is not same. So here it is like this. You can observe here that this is the portion P and this is the portion Q. Now, at this tangent vector direction is same. The direction of tangent vector is same. You can observe here for P and Q, the tangent vector direction is same. But magnitude of this tangent vector are may or may not be equal. The magnitude for the tangent vector are may or may not be equal. Depends upon the value of k. These are proportional, same direction. So tangent vector direction is same, proportional, but not necessarily the magnitude is equal. Magnitude may or may not be equal. That is first order geometric continuity. The same here, the second order geometric continuity. In the second order geometric continuity, which is represented as g raised to 2, means that both the first and second order, first and second order parametric derivatives of the two curve section are proportional at their boundary point. Tangent vector direction is same, but magnitude may or may not be same. And for that, as it is a proportional, again the constant value k is used. P double dash indicates second order derivative. So x, y, z, if k is equal to 1, both magnitudes are same. If k is other than 1, magnitudes are not same. Both. In both the curve or both the section of the curve. So we can say that second order derivative, parametric derivative implies first order geometric derivative, second order geometric derivative. But second order geometric derivative does not imply first order geometric uh, parametric derivative. So this is true but it is not true always. That is about the representation of interpolation, cubic slide interpolation in parametric uh, continuity condition and using the geometric continuity condition. In both the cases there are three types. Zero order, first order and second order. In parametric continuity condition, at the connectivity point, joining point, it must be equal. The tangent vector value or magnitude must be equal. But in geometric continuity condition, in second and first order, the magnitude may or may not be equal. Tangent vector magnitude may or may not be equal, but the direction of the tangent vector is same proportional to each other. That is about the cubic spline interpolation. Now see how the shape is changes according to the 
geometric continuity condition. A curve generated with geometric continuity condition is similar to one generated with the parametric continuity condition with slight difference in the curve shape. A curve generated with the geometric continuity condition is same as parametric with slight difference in the shape of curve. Here two examples are given with three control points. Point P0, P1 and P2. These are the three control points are given here. In this example also there are three control points P0, P1 and P2. In this example C1 is the first curve and C2 is the another curve which are joined together with a parametric continuity condition. And in this B, you can see it is the curve C1 and this is curve C3. Now here, the tangent vector of curve C3 at point P1 has a greater magnitude and that's why you can observe the shape of the curve is increased here. Here why it is increased? Here the tangent vector value is same and that's why the shape, there is no such great change in the shape. But here the tangent vector value is increased and that's why you can observe the shape of the curve change at curve C3. Has a greater magnitude than the tangent vector of the curve C1. With geometric continuity the curve is pulled towards the section with greater tangent vector. If I decrease the uh, value of the tangent vector magnitude then shape will be like this. If I increase it again, the shape will be like this. In this case, if tangent vector is increased, the shape will be like this. If it is again increased, then shape will be like this. So, tangent vector value magnitude is very important in the geometric representation of the curve, cubic spline curve. Its magnitude decides the shape of the curve. That is about the Cubic spline interpolation. So I am going to show here one simple video. It will clear your concept again. This video illustrates three different levels of continuity. The first one is no continuity, not even continuity of position. You can see that the continuity. The first one is no continuity, not even continuity of position. You can see that the yellow path is broken in the middle so that when the car traverses it, at this point in the middle here, it seems to suddenly teleport. In fact, it does. This would only be appropriate in a science fictional setting. If we ensure continuity of position, but not continuity of velocity, then at the middle of the path, the car will suddenly change direction, right here. This would only be appropriate if a collision or some other force impacted the car at that moment. If we don't want this to happen, we can ensure tangential continuity, that is, continuity of velocity. This path has no sudden changes in velocity, although at the middle point here, there is a sudden change of acceleration, but it's difficult to see. If we even wanted to remove that and make the car have perfectly smooth driving, we would ensure curvature continuity, that is, continuity of the second derivative of position. You'll notice that on this path, the car has very smooth driving. That's a subtle change, but you can ensure it with C2 continuity if you want to. So what is shown here, if we zero order continuity, only connectivity is there, not show the smooth change in the uh, curve, okay, or when at the joining point it is not smooth. When, it, when we go for the next one, that is first order connectivity, it becomes more smooth. When we go for the second order connectivity, again it becomes more smooth and when we consider all these with the tangent vector magnitude, means the 
a geometric continuity condition second order then it is very generate a very smooth curve so cubic spline there are three equivalent method to represent the cubic spline particular cubic spline represent we can start state the state of the boundary condition that are imposed on the spline boundary condition means if we are going to draw a curve like this the four points a b c d and we draw the curve in this way we can state the matrix that characterize the spline the matrix again we are going to see here but previously also we have seen ax bx these are a b c d so accordingly we create ax bx cx dx matrix and the multiplication with the tangent vector we can state the set of the blending function that we are going to see in the next slide that how to find out the blending function or the basis function that determine how specified geometric constraint on the curve are combined to calculate the position along the curve path so there are three ways we can state the boundary condition to draw the curve we can state the matrix and we can find out the blending function to generate the curve so suppose we have the following parameter here again i am going to draw the same curve with four points a b c and d the curve i am going to draw here with these four points now previous lecture already i have told that here we are going to consider the four points only because the when we represent it with the polynomial uh, representation the degree of polynomial is depend upon how many control points are there if we consider there are 10 control points then it is x raised to 10 x raised to 9 we start with x raised to 0 to x raised to 9 if there are 16 control points then it is x raised to 15 plus x raised to 14 up to x raised to 0 and it becomes very complex to execute such kind of polynomial representation and that's why here we are going to consider only the four point representation the four point representation a b c d as there are four points it is x raised to 3 x raised to 2 x raised to 1 and x raised to 0 and as these are points a b c d how we represent for x axis y axis and z axis why because it is a 3d representation so when we consider it with the x axis x of t the tangent vector how we represent a x t raised to 3 why because here there are four points we consider maximum four points we are going to consider so the polynomial of degree 3 here we need to consider so bx t raised to 2 plus cx t plus dx the same using this function we can obtain the matrix how we write the matrix for this function t t3 t2 t1 t0 this is the first matrix tangent uh, vector matrix and these are the control points ax bx cx and dx with respect to x coordinate when we go for the y coordinate it is represented as yt is equal to ay t raised to 3 plus by t raised to 2 plus cy t plus dy and how we represent this function instead of here ax bx cx the matrix becomes ay by cy and dy similarly when we go for the third z coordinate sorry it is az t raised to 3 plus bz t raised to 2 plus cz t plus dz and here again we use this in the matrix form so this t capital d it represent the tangent vector and this c matrix this is with respect to the control points a b c d for the x coordinate y coordinate and z coordinate and when we go it together see it together it looks like this so ax that three functions already i have written 
So these three functions are there with respect to x, y and z coordinate. And when we combine these together, t into c, what is t? t is equal to the tangent vector matrix and c is the control point matrix ax, bx, cx, dx, ay, by, cy, dy, az, bz, cz, dz. And when we multiply this, we will get these functions for x coordinate, y coordinate and z coordinate. So that is the represent of cubic slide with respect to matrix form. So how to identify the bonding function or basic function from this matrix? So this matrix x, y, z, this This matrix X, Y, T and Z, T, T, M, G, it is represented as T, M, G. T is the tangent vector M. M is a 4 into 4 basis matrix with respect to X and Y, X, Y, Z coordinates. So, M, I, J, 4 into 4 matrix with respect to the uh, coordinates. G is a 4 element, G1, G2, G3 and G4 which are geometric constant, which are geometric constant and we call them as a geometric vector, g1, g2, g3, g4. And when these together m into g, uh, sorry, t into m, this t uh, tangent vector multiply with this m, it generates the blending function b. It generates the blending function b. The curve is a weighted sum of the elements of the geometry matrix. So, geometry matrix this is fixed and when these together generate the blending function. The weights are each cubic polynomial of T and are called the blending function. T is the tangent vector, M is the basis matrix. So, both together it becomes the blending function for cubic slide, uh, the, cubic slide curve. So, the equation for single parametric cubic spline segment with the help of blending function, how we can write it? The equation for single parametric cubic spline segment. So, use boundary conditions to evaluate the constant coefficient. Pt, what is Pt? Already I have told in the previous that, previously that Pt is a position vector. So, when I draw a curve like this, Suppose this is the starting point, this is the end point of the curve. So, this is the first T1 and this is T2. First point is T1 and the end point is T2. And this is our curve, for example, suppose the curve P. Now, position vector PT any, suppose this is the PT, position vector PT. What is this T? T is greater than this T1, greater than or equal to T1 and less than or equal to T2. T, T is any point between T1 and T2. T1 is the starting point of the curve and T2 is the end point of the curve. So, Pt, the position vector, how we are represent of any point on the cubic line segment? B1, B1 is the blending function. B1, now it is considered again the four point curve and that's why the highest polynomial of degree 3 is there. So, B1 plus B2 T plus B3 T raised to 2 plus B4 T raised to 3. Where T1 and T2 are the beginning and end point of the segment. So, here this is the beginning point and this is the end point of the segment. And T is any point in between T1 and T2. T is greater than or equal to T1 and less than or equal to T2. So, Pt, if we want to represent it in the summation form, B1 plus B2 plus B3 plus B4. So, summation of I is equal to 1 to 4. Summation of I is ranges from 1, 2, 3, 4. B of I and T raised to I minus 1. Why I minus 1? As it is the polynomial of degree 3, which is 1 less than the 4 points. So, it is t raised to i minus 1 where t ranges from 1 to 2. t ranges from t1 to t2. So, any position vector on the cubic slide segment we can represent with the blending function in this way. 
b1 plus b2 t plus b3 t raise square plus b4 t raise to cube. Now, how to represent the position vector on the standard um, say, uh, curve? So, when it is a Cartesian, it is represented as x t y t z t. When it is a cylindrical curve, then here we require the radius, angle and z coordinate. And when it is a spherical, we require radius along with the two angles. So, these are the standard ways in which we can represent the any position vector or of any point on the cubic spline segment curve. So, when we represent it separately for x, y and z axis, how we represent it? x t is equal to, sorry, x t is equal to summation of i 1 to 4. Again, it is a degree of polynomial of degree 3. So, 4 points are there, 1 to 4. So, x t is equal to, it is b 1 x plus, sorry, b 2 x t raise to 1 plus b 3 x t raise to 2 plus b 4 x t raise to 3. I, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4 and t raise is I minus 1. So, in this way, x t for particular x direction or x coordinate it is represented. So, y in the same way, y t with respect to the blending function is b1 y plus b2 y t raise to 1 plus b3 y t raise to 2 plus b4 y t raise to 3. In the same way, the z axis representation is there with respect to z coordinate. So, the constant coefficient b i determined by specifying four boundary conditions for the b slime curve. That is a, b, c, d we normally consider four points or four boundary conditions to simplify the next equation. Because it is difficult when we increase the number of control points, the polynomial degree also increases. And when we increase the polynomial degree, it becomes difficult to understand or the solve the problem becomes very complex. Now, this cubic spline, suppose we consider that in this case, P1 and P2 be the position vector at the end of spline segment. So, that is shown in this diagram. This is P1 and this is P2. So, this is the starting point and this is the end point of the segment. Also, P1 dash and P2 dash that is derivatives with respect to 2 uh, t. So, that derivative means dx divided x coordinate for x coordinate it is dx divided by dt. For y coordinate it is dy divided by dt and for z coordinate is dz divided by dt. Also, this P1 dash. So, it this P1 dash is the first derivative that we have seen in the previous slide. So, first, deriv first order derivative second order and so on. So, the P1 dash is the first order derivative for P1, this P1, while P2 dash is the first order derivative of P2. So, derivatives with respect to T be the tangent vectors at the ends of the spline segment. So, it indicates the tangent vector. So, this indicates the direction of this particular curve and this indicate the direction of this particular curve at this end point on this starting point. So, p dash t it is the first order derivative of p. It is represented as at x coordinate it is x dash t, at y coordinate it is y dash t and for z coordinate it is z dash t. How we represent in the form of equation in our equation p dash t is equal to summation of i to 4, i ranges from 1 to 4, 4 control points we consider i minus 1 b i t raise to i minus 2 according to the equation of uh, derivation we write it. So, p dash t become b 2 okay, plus 2 b 2 as this one i minus 1. So, i start with 
1. So, 1 minus 1 it becomes see here how we write it p dash t is equal to summation of i minus 1. So, initially i is equal to 1. So, 1 minus 1 multiply with b i. So, b 1 t raised to i minus 1. So, what is i initially i is equal to 1. So, 1 minus 2. So, what happens it 1 minus 1 means 0 multiply with this term. So, it becomes equal to 0. Okay. So, it becomes equal to 0. So, that uh, we are not going to represent. So, in next one i is equal to 2. So, i is equal to 2 i minus 1. So, it is 1 multiply with b 2 plus t raised to i minus 2. Uh, I have 2 minus 2 it is 0. So, 2 raised to 0 is 1. So, it becomes b 2 this 2 b 2 uh, b 3 t and 3 p 4 t the according to this first order derivation. So, let first initially we consider that t 1 is equal to 0 as I will told that t 1 is equal to 0. So, p of 0. So, at this position what is the value of t? It is equal to 0 and that is why it is equal to p 1 whatever as it is. While what is the derivative of this at t 1 is equal to 0 derivative is p 1 dash. Now, we consider this t 2. So, this t 2. So, p of t 2 this is the end point position vector is equal to p 2 and p dash t 2 is equal to the first derivative of p 2 that is p, da p dash 2. Now, we write this for all four equations for four points in detail. So, first this p p naught. So, p naught means t 1 is equal to 0 for that it is equal to p 1 or first position that is b 1. Next p 2. So, p 2 means here this point we are going to derive. What is it? That equation we have written. What is it? Summation of i is equal to 1 to 4 b raised to i uh, t b i multiply with t minus i and that equation we have already seen in the previous slide that is b 1 plus b 2 t raised to 1 plus b 3 t raised to 2 plus b 4 t raised to 3 is equal to p 2. So, that is the equation for this end point. Now, p dash g no p dash 0 or the first derivative of this p naught. So, the first derivative that equation also we have seen in the previous slide. What is the equation? It is summation of i ranges from 1 to 4 i minus 1 b dash t raised to i minus 2. So, according to this the values of b, b 2 is p 2 p 1 dash that is first derivative. Then if we calculate put the value here in this equation put the value 0. So, after putting the value 0 we will get it is equal to b 2 only. If we put the value 0 in the pre in this equation then we will get here only b 2. So, p 1 dash is equal to b 2. Next we calculate the first derivative of the end point that is p 2. So, it is summation of again we use the same equation and in this equation now we are going to put the value of t 2. So, if we put the value of t 2 then p 2 dash is equal to b 2 plus 2 b 3 t 2 raise to 1 plus 3 b 4 t raise to 2. So, that is here in this way we will get this according to this we will get this equation for this p 2 dash. So, this is the equation for uh, p 1 is equal to b 1, p 2 is equal to this equation b 1 plus b 2 and this one p 1 dash is equal to b 2 and p 2 dash is equal to this equation that is the first derivative of this equation. So, this is the first derivative of 
this is the first derivative of this equation while this is the first derivative of this equation. Now, so solving b1, b2, b3, b4, what we will get after at the end the result b1 is equal to p1 that we have solved here b1 is equal to b1 is equal to p1 that we have solved here and b2 is equal to p1 dash. Now we write it for b3 and b4. So b1 is equal to p1 that is here b2 is equal to p1 dash b3 is equal to in this way when we put the value in the equation we will get this result and b4 is equal to this one. So, here p1 and p2 give the position of the end point. So, p1 and p2 this is the first starting point and this is the end point and p1 dash and p2 dash give the direction of tangent vector. So, it indicate that it is in this direction the curve goes in this direction. So, that is p1 dash and p2 dash. So, these values when we got these values b1, b2, b3 and b4 it determine the cubic spline segment together. So, that is here written together p t is equal to then it is written for the entire position vector p t. Substituting these values in the pre first equation what is our first equation? It is like this. So, the equation is p t this equation p t is equal to b 1 plus b 2 t plus b 3 t square plus b 4 t cube. So, put the values of b 1, b 2, b 3, b 4 here these values whatever we have calculated put these values here. So, b 1 is p 1, b 2 is p 1 is p 1, b 2 is p 2 p 1 dash, b 3 has this entire value t square and b 4 has this entire value. So, thus given the two end points if we are given the first and the last end point and the tangent vector one can compute the cubic spline. So, if we are given the first and last position vector we can compute the cubic spline. So, for piece wise continuity suppose add we add here another curve second piece then for that we find out the same for that we require to find out the p double dash. So, in this way we need to increase the derivation of that particular tangent vector.